everyone, I'm Shail Mok. I give a lot of talks and in many of them the subject of performance comes up. In this video I will elaborate on a topic I bring up in many of my talks, my three tips for performance. I've spent over a decade of my 30 year career as a consultant and saw hundreds of projects and there is one performance tip that is universally true with, whether you're writing low level assembly code for an embedded system or a distributed cloud solution. My three tips are caching, caching, and caching. Wait, don't go away. There's more. Caching sounds like a simplistic solution, but it's not. Cache invalidation, especially in a distributed or concurrent environment, is one of the biggest problems in computer science. A major part of our work is to maximize cache hits, whether it's CPU cache by making our program small or data application cache by accessing data consistently. The three tips I'll cover today are about better caching in your high-level applications. The first seems obvious. Use HTTP GET operation. This seems like a no-brainer, but unfortunately it isn't. Go to your website search feature and press the search button. Was that a POST request or a GET request? Notice that search engines use a GET request and not a POST request when submitting a search. Every such request can be cached by the content delivery network, the CDN, and can skip the server entirely. That means it's effectively free thanks to caching. Yes, it will take longer to refresh with new data, but for many requests, that's a reasonable compromise. The performance improvement of responding directly from the CDN is staggering. But a lot of times we prevent the GET operation from caching properly by passing too many arguments. We can exclude specific arguments from a CDN. But that's problematic as we might want them in a different part of the code and it complicates CDN rules. We need to monitor cache utilization and try to avoid user-specific arguments in GET requests. There are many forms of data caching and some pretty sophisticated solutions involved in that. They are fantastic, but one of the big problems is we don't properly measure their benefits. In a staging environment, the data cache can deliver an order of magnitude in terms of performance benefits, but in production, it might provide a tiny bump. This is because of cache duplication and is something many companies run into. Stack Overflow recently removed their database level cache because it didn't provide a performance boost. This is something you can usually only determine against production data where all the caches are active. Don't get me wrong, level two cache on top of the database is one of the most important performance boosts to an application in the right situation. But we need to tune it so it will make sense and reduce the load on the database. It's also important to measure it for the right operations where its impact is felt, as the CDN can't cache these operations. The core idea in this second tip is this. Instead of relying on a single type of cache, use a layered caching strategy. This involves using different types of caches at different layers of your application. For example, you might use in memory caching like Redis for the most frequently accessed data, a local disk cache for less critical data, and a CDN, a content delivery network, for caching static content at the edge. This tiered approach reduces the load on your databases and backend services and delivers data to users as quickly as possible. But we need to tune it and must use observability to tune it because getting all of these layers right is a major undertaking. Which brings me to the final big problem. One of the biggest in computer science, if we have multiple layers of caching, how the hell do we invalidate them all when something changes? One of the best approaches for this is data versioning. With data versioning, we can skip the CDN and browser caches when necessary. 
we can use an additional version argument that doesn't need to map to anything. This doesn't solve the data and validation problem in the level two caches, but does help with external tools. Uh, if we look at the search example from before, you will notice that there is an add on version argument in the search. You, will, you can keep a version number in Redis or a global cache and increment it whenever things change enough. This argument can be ignored by the server as its only purpose is to trigger a refresh. I've seen servers max out at 1,000 concurrent users, which is insane. Modern servers can handle massive traffic when information is properly cached. Think of CDNs as an army of scale at our service. We need to maximize that and our vertical scaling before scaling horizontally. The most important thing you can do to get the right, uh, that right is deep understanding of your caching strategy. It will reduce costs, improve performance and scale. Despite all of these, I, I see very few projects that configure caching properly. It's astounding since Spring and other popular frameworks have amazing caching capabilities built right in. We can use annotations like Cacheable that automatically cache the objects for us using a distributed caching solution. We can similarly use annotations to evict cache seamlessly. There are, these are all trivial operations that should be thought of on day one. Adding caching after the fact is much harder as some data might be resistant to caching. I hope this has given you the motivation to review your caching strategy. Thanks for watching. Please check out my book and follow me for more videos like this. Thank you.